Hey guys, it is Carl Brown from Guitar Lessons 365.com. I have a classic for you today dedicated to the late Ginger Baker, who we just lost this week. Uh, we're going to learn how to play White Room by Cream. I'm not sure why I haven't covered this one before. I don't know. I thought I did. I guess I just kind of left it, uh, um, kind of slipped my mind. But we're going to jump into it now. Before I do, please uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, ring that little notification bell too so you know when I release a new little video. And uh, check out my Guitar Academy at guitarlessons365.com. It's got all my guitar courses. It's a really great community over there, so I hope you'll join it. And I want to say a special thank you to anybody who uh, has actually joined this YouTube channel. If you become a member of this actual YouTube channel by clicking the Join button, um, you'll see somewhere on the screen, you'll see somewhere. Um, and that little donation every month really helps me crank out these uh, free YouTube videos every week. So I really appreciate it. All right, so let's jump into it. We're in standard tuning here, and we have uh, this intro, which really is kind of, has these kind of big chords underneath it, and then it has this harmony stuff on top. So really what the harmony is doing is just kind of going through uh, the same chords uh, that we're playing underneath, obviously. So um, those harmony lines, though, are a combination of like guitar and vocals. Live, they really never did it on guitar. They they would back in the day they would do them, the harmony stuff with vocals, um, and just play the chords underneath. So it's a power trio. They couldn't really do all that extra guitar harmony parts and stuff. But I will give you, show you some ideas if you have multiple guitar players that you can do this with, and maybe ways of if you want, you can just kind of do them um, all on one guitar. All right, so let's get into it here and uh, check out this intro. All right, so we start here with just a sequence of four chords. We have a G minor. To an F major. To a D power chord. To a C power chord. So um, now you just want to, um, you, can, you can play it as a full D minor chord if you want up here and then a C major, but most of the time you see them do it live. Just do the power chords. Um, so anyway, the harmonies are playing the full minor and major chords though. So, and you'll see Clapton also play this G minor chord with his thumb wrapped over on the, and, and playing the low note on the sixth string. It's, but it's still just a standard G minor chord he's playing. So that's a full bar at the third fret if you want to play it like in the normal fashion. And just the uh, fifth fret on the A and the D. So we have that, uh, which like I said, you could play that bar, the top three strings, and take the bottom note with the, the um, thumb. And then he does the same thing on the F, but you can play that like a normal F major chord. So it's taking the same chord we just did, this G minor, move it down two frets, and then add the second fret there on the G string. Then we jump up to those power chords I was talking about. So it's a D power chord, so it's the fifth, fret of the A string. So 5th fret of the A, 7th fret of the D. Take that and then just move it down 2 frets to the C. If you want to do the full chords there, you can just do it as a D minor to a C major. So that's 5th fret on the A, 7th on the D, 7th on the G, 6th on the uh, B string. That's a D minor chord. And then we get to the C major, which I, I like to do the bars with the pinky a lot. So does Clapton. Uh, so anyway, uh, but you could do it like this if you want. Um, so that's just a standard C major chord, third fret of the A, then fifth fret of the D. G. So all together. Full chord. Or just the power core in the second two. And then they end it with a, an A power chord. So it's just an open A power chord, open A string, and then the second fret on the D, and then the second fret on the G too. Then they get into the main uh, verse. So let's take a look here. Um, those are the underlying chords. What's going on in the harmony? Now in the harmony, it's each one of these lines is being played on a separate uh, by themselves. Um, so you can play it just kind of like. So 
So that would be one harmony line. And then the next one. So like I said, they're all being played individually. What they're actually doing in full is uh, playing th this harmony. All right, so if you played each one of those notes on a separate guitar, you'd have a, a pretty good representation of it. Um, there are some lower harmonies. But I'm gonna just kinda show you, just for completeness sake, what, uh, first I'll show you what I just did here. So if you wanna play these individually, or play them all together if you just have one guitar. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, you can do them like that. And then I'll show you how to kind of split out and play kind of more authentic uh, what's going on, but you're gonna need multiple guitars, like you're gonna be in about, about 17 guitars to do it. So anyway, so uh, the 12th fret on the G string, 11th fret on the B, and then 10th fret on the high E. So that's a G minor chord. Then we take that down to an F major, just like we do G, F major. So that's all they're doing is playing the higher notes, uh, voicings of the, the same chords they're playing in the, in the rhythm. And that's um, 10 on the G string, 10 on the B, 8 on the high E. Then you can see here that two of these notes are going to stay the same in the next chord. That's called proper voice leading. Common tone. And then we're just going to make it a D minor chord, though, when we take this note and move it to this D. We have a D minor triad. So that's 12th fret there on the G, and then 10th fret on the G and the B. And then down to um, a C major. So it's uh, 10 on the D, 9 on the G, 8 on the B. So you can just kind of do that. Now the bummer about that is you can't really add a lot of cool vibrato to it. Um, so let's separate these notes out a little bit, um, kind of a, a way I like to do it. Say you had somebody who was doing this. And then you had, uh, miraculously had four additional guitar players in your band. <laughs> I know it doesn't happen, but uh, I, I, this is the stuff I obsess about all day. So anyway, so let's go. So that's the top one we're going to do. We're going to do 15 on the B to 13, down to 10, and then 12. Like I said, some of these lines are probably even done on vocals, so... Quit hitting that open G, Carl. All right, so now just underneath that, along with that, we have this. So you can see in that harmony line, I didn't go all the way down through four notes. It's based on three notes, because remember when we did those chords, when we had those uh, common tones? from the C major, I'm sorry, the F major chord to the D minor. We had two common tones. So that's one of those common tones. So we started with the G, and then when we went down to the F, this note was a common tone. So they held it, For now when it went to the D chord, they played that same note again, and then go down to the E here at the um, ninth fret on the G. So we had this. All right, now you'll also hear um, kind of a, just an octave down from, from this one. All right, and then you'll also hear um, the harmony coming off the, the B flat in the, so we, we just did the 
harmony off the, the top note in the on the of the chord. And then the bottom note. But now that middle note has one too. And you can also play this in this an octave lower. Is just I did the octave uh, versions of the same one, so you can do whatever one you think sounds the best. Um, but that's once again just that starting off the third of the G minor chord, and then it goes 11th fret there on the B string, down to the 10th fret on the A, uh, the A note here. Now this A note is a common tone between F major and D minor, so they play that again, and then down to G. So it is. Hit that note, the, always hit the last note again when you hit that uh, A chord. Kind of that A minor 7. Get there. And then we get into the song. All right, now this riff is played a kind of a slight variation when he plays it on the original recording. This first chord, this D power chord, is usually how it's done. You'll usually see him when he plays it live. It's just kind of big. Based around just that D power chord. And you would think it'd be like a B minor, I mean a D minor if he was going to play the full chord, but when he does play the full chord, which he does a couple of times when he goes back to the first, he does it as a D major. So you'll sometimes hear this played the top, the first chord in the progression played as a D major or sometimes just a D power chord. D power chord basically means you're not going to involve the high E string in it. You're just going to basically play the A, the D string, uh, G string, and B string. All right, so we're gonna start there. So that allows us now to go and grab this, 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 the notes, the C note here at the third fret of the A string. Hit that a couple of times, and then the open D and G string together. So we have this. And then down to uh, the uh, second fret there on the A. And then that open D and G again. So we have this. And then he jumps back and grabs a B flat major and a C uh, major chord, but he does it by adding the fifth in the bass. You see Clapton do this a lot. He likes kind of taking the fifth of the chord, playing it first, and then playing the actual chord. So he picks the what you're gonna do is you're gonna play that B flat major uh, bar chord. Now you can do it obviously with your ring finger if you want, but that's the first fret of the A and then the third fret of the D, G, and the B. So that's a standard way of doing it. But he adds the fifth of the chord in the bass as well. So just take that first finger and bar it across the sixth string as well. And what he does is he picks the sixth string first and then the B flat chord. So you hit pick that low note, and then from the fifth string across. And then do the same thing two frets higher. So we have this. So sometimes when he goes back to that D to start it over, he'll do the same treatment with 
He'll have a little low fifth in the bass. He'll add the open A string in the bass. So you might hear that to... All right, so pretty basic rhythm. And then we uh, have the, I guess what would be considered the chorus section. It's the falsetto section of the song. Let's call it that. All right, where Clapton comes in singing. And we have these chords. So over, uh, while that's being played, uh, uh, there's a wah pedal that he's kind of rocking with it too. So it's kind of like he, kind of this. Gives it that kind of psychedelic sound. So just take a wah pedal. So find a spot that doesn't sound incredibly annoying and um, like don't get it too high. Anyway, so anyway, so uh, let me cut that wall off. So we have that C major chord that we did before with that fifth in the bass. So we're doing that the full C major chord there, and then you got that third fret on the low E string going on with it. Resolve that down to the G major chord. All right, so with this. That G major, just a full bar, the third fret, fourth fret on the G, fifth fret on the D, and fifth fret on the A. Then take the same thing, that same B flat with the fifth and the bass down here at the first fret. You do that, and then take that down to an A major chord, and you still have the low, the fifth and the bass, so it's the low E open string with it. That's easier. So you just do that however way you like to play an A major chord. So we'll start over again. And this second time around, instead of going to that B flat to the A, it just goes to the B flat, back up to the C, still the fifth in the bass, and then up to a D major. So up two, two more frets, still with the fifth in the bass. And then he has this little fill. So that's kind of, that's kind of sliding into the ninth fret of the D. Over to the uh, seventh fret on the G, back to the nine on the D, and then back to that seven. All right, and then back to the. So I will say one thing when he's. It could be kind of pulling off to that open A. Not so that way you don't kind of ruin the uh, the rhythm of the thing. Anyway, any way you want to do it. All right, so then we have the same progressions kind of just kind of repeat. Now Clapton, he does a lot of soloing throughout the, the track. He starts out with some scant fills and then like kind of over the um, second verse, he pretty much is soloing the entire time. And then he has his main solo at the end of the song until it fades out. So instead of uh, kind of tracking all that stuff down, um, it's one of those solos that's obviously very blues influenced and is very, has, uses a lot of the same type of ideas and scales and notes in slightly different variations and ways. So those are the, always the solos of the, the uh, toughest ones to, um, to navigate because they're just hard to memorize. So my idea here is just to kind of show you what he is doing through 95% of this solo, the scale choices he used. And now, not only here, but in just many of his songs, the solos that he he's does. And it's mostly based off of one scale form. So in this case, we're, we're, it's mostly based off of D minor pentatonic. 
So what he is doing, and I'll give you a couple of lick ideas too. Uh, he's doing the, the wahs going on. He's playing with the wah pedals too. But let's look at the scale form first. We have a, we're going to start with this, this D minor pentatonic scale. <laughs> So that's uh, 13 and 10 on the high E, same thing on the B. Then we're going to go 12, 10 on the G, and then the same thing on the D and the A. So we have this. Now that is part of the scale form, but I'm not going to go all the way down to the low sixth string here because I want to show you kind of how, I mean, little. Really, you would usually end with just 13, 10. That's the full form. But some Clapton-isms that he likes to do is he plays this scale until he gets to the fifth string. Then he moves it down to the, the, the uh, pentatonic shape before it. So, so we have 12, 10, move down to 8. And then he'll play 10, 12 there. I'm mean, sorry, yeah, 10, 8, I'm sorry. And then go back up. So he likes to mess around with that form. I'll show you a couple of licks in a second. I just want to show you that if you could just do your own solos. He's, for the entire so solo for White Room, I would say, well, not entire, but more than 95% of it, he is just playing in these, this one, these one area that I'm showing you. Now, when you get up top, he kind of likes to now mess around with the top two strings as well. So instead of, he, like he said, he moves down on the two bottom strings, on the, on the pentatonic, on the low, on the, uh, Pentatonic when he gets up here, he does the same thing here. So, so instead of going 10 and 13, which he do, he, he does use these notes, but he also moves up to 13, 15 there on the B and 13, 15 on the high E. And Alright, so all you gotta do is mess around with that scale form with the kind of strong. So he kind of starts the solo with the basic, normal, this is the main solo at the end of the track. Just with that basic blues solo. The basic blues like 10th fret on the high E, pull off 13, 10 on the B, into a bend at the 12th fret on the G. So that's as basic as you get with the blues, and he repeats that a couple, like three times. Then he has a cool little section in the solo where he does this. Where he's playing 13th fret on the B, then 10 on the high E, and then hammer on to 13 on the B. So that, this, ah, the wah pedal's annoying me. So, uh, so. Kind of a kind of classic repetitive blues, blues like two, 13 on the B, hammer. 10, 13 on the high. All right, so I think that's a better idea for you just to kind of use, if you can, if, even if you wanted to figure out the solo on your own or play along with some of the licks, 
Um, this kind of solves the mystery because they're almost all of them going to be right within those exact patterns I showed you on this standard D minor pentatonic shape, scooting down to the eighth fret on the two bottom strings and then scooting up to the, when he gets to the, on the high E string, you can either play down the 10th fret or up here. Now he does a couple of times in the solo, he'll go up and uh, once or twice hit a high note, but he likes it. That's home base for him and he's there most of the time. All right, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon for guitarlessons365.com.